I've had a stream deck for many, many years. My first stream deck was simply the 15 button because that's all they had. Since then, I've actually gotten a couple other stream decks on my desk right here. We have the 32 button and the 15 button, and I use them daily in different things. I even have the mobile stream deck for when I'm on the road and I want to uh, move cameras around while I'm not at the station. Elgato has expanded that into a new version of Stream Deck, the virtual Stream Deck. And it's in beta right now and we're playing with it and we're gonna do that next on Geekazine. What's up my geeks? Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine. Think Magazine put in a geek. The software is absolutely free. No, it's no sponsorship happening here. All opinions are my own and I'm going to say right now that they are great. So let's take a look at what's going on over at Stream Deck here. This is 7.0. It's in beta right now. So if you were to do the update, it would get you to 6.9, but it wouldn't get you to 7.0. You have to download that separate. I highly recommend highly highly even though it didn't happen to me i highly recommend that you back up all of your stream deck settings before you start this works on windows this works on mac i have done this on windows so far and of course i will be doing it on my mac systems in the next 24 hours of course Do it now! Basically what this does is this creates a virtual button and this virtual button will sit on your desktop so you can actually press it with the mouse if you've got a touch screen then you could of course, press it with a touch screen. And what's great about that is if you do have a touch screen, then you've got all your work in one area. When I go out and do video for anybody, I'll have the little 15 button stream deck, but I always also have a touch screen. So I'm actually touching to switch between the cameras more than I am the stream deck. To have the virtual stream deck buttons on the screen means I could actually just touch on the screen and that will pull into that specific scene or that specific whatever. If I want to bring up my graphics, like maybe uh, maybe my lower third or something like that, up and down, simple things like that, I can just do that. Or if you know they got a song list and I'm, I'm recording a band, we got the next song coming through, I've got these buttons. But the bigger thing is that this is expanding the amount of buttons that I have, the amount of options that I have, because I can do a lot of other things. Like for instance, I could actually hit a Stream Deck button and it could actually change the virtual button. But of course, we're putting the cart before the horse. Don't put the horse before. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Stream Deck software here. So this is 7.0. As you can see, it's no different than the other ones. We've got some I've got some new versions of the apps that are there from OBS Studio. I've, I'm using Majewell Director. If you haven't seen my Majewell Director 1 videos out there, you check that out because it's a great little streaming box, hardware streaming box. And to bring Stream Deck into it is just gonna make it all that much more sweet, that's for sure. I got all my extra apps that I've gotten, I've had for years from vMix. We got the vMix set up here. I've also got the Wirecast set up uh, down there. And of course the OBS set up, but we're, this is my, vmix because that's this basically this 15 button which is switching between these cameras makes sense all right so now i need to make a virtual stream deck well how do i do that well that starts up in this top left hand corner so if you go down and you do the drop down you'll see your stream deck profiles and then you'll have a add mobile device if of course if you've got your phone uh, but you can also add virtual device and when you do that that creates a six button system right there simple as that it will ultimately show up on the top corner here once we start putting buttons in but i want to show you the settings and i want to show you this these two things here so we have the eye that's going to turn on and off oh wait it moved it over here okay i've got multiple screens there we are there's our stream deck buttons so i can hide it and i can bring it in as you can see we've got six empty buttons do absolutely nothing that's okay let's go to the settings here we can set this up as a fixed stream deck or a dynamic stream deck that will show up wherever you are on your screen we're going back to fixed we can assign a hotkey to it control shift N. I don't think anything is running from there. So now if I do control shift N, that brings in and out my stream deck. Let's go back into the settings. 
Auto hide when cursor leaves the panel. You can check that. And then once that leaves the panel, that'll disappear after the action is triggered. So if I press this, that will actually make this disappear. We've got a layout. You want two rows, you want three rows, you want four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight rows by eight rows. That's gonna be a really big stream deck, that's for sure. Let's bring it back down to something a little bit more manageable. And we're gonna go to uh, three to two as originally designed. So we can change the key size. Look at that, we can make big buttons or we can make really tiny ones. Well, not really tiny. It's a 4K monitor. You'd, so you, actually from this, you'll see it's pretty visible when you are looking at the buttons. So, all right. So now we've got that, we've got our size right, we've got, we can do the opacity so we can kind of see through the buttons if we need to. So we can actually put it onto the screen and then let's just bring that opacity up and then we can choose the frame color. So we can give it a nice purplish color right there or anything like that. Let's let's take it back to a more neutral color. So now we've got our stream deck. We can move our stream deck around and we can push the buttons, although we don't have any buttons. Uh, setting up the stream deck, actually very, very straightforward. All we have to do is go down into our control panel and let's bring up a website. So let's go ahead and do that. And as you can see right there, that actually, you can, you can change this option, but right there, it only shows one button instead of the six. And of course, if you wanna hide it all together, you can do so. You can also right click or secondary click onto the uh, button. You can choose to configure, you can hide the panel and you can lock position. Locking position will not allow that to move at all. So then we unlock it. Now we can move it around as much as we want. So we hide the panel, boom, it's gone. You notice that the eye right there has now a line in there. So we do that and it unhides it. Unfortunately, I haven't found a way to unhide <laughs> the panel from the screen. So you actually have to go in the Stream Deck software to do that. So we've got basically the website. Let's go ahead and go cuisine.com, boom. Now look at that, that's actually pretty cool. If the website has an icon, on it and we'll make this bigger so you can see if it's got the icon for it like my geekazine logo right there then it will show up as the icon which is really cool let's bring it back down to about a reasonable size and now if i go to press this it opens up geekazine.com simple as that i love it so every time I want to open it up, boom, I can press that button. I can press it till the cows come home and it'll definitely redo and redo and redo my uh, my website. So we can bring in another button. We could play an audio. So let's go ahead and do that. The mother mothership, how's that? There we go. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that or not through the microphone, but it's playing the mothership and we can stop. So we can create our soundboard straight from here. So if I had secondary touchscreen monitor, I could put 80 buttons onto that uh, onto that panel. Of course, I got to hook it up to the computer first and then I could have all my 80 buttons and then I'm just hitting the touch screen to get me whatever I want, which is really cool. So this adds another level of what you can do on Stream Deck from here, whether you're using the touch or you're using the mouse options, it doesn't matter. It will allow you to do that. And then of course uh, you can move this around as you go. Like I said, this is gonna be a really great savior for my portable rigs because a lot of my portable rigs are very small limited desk space and a lot of times i'll have like uh, if it's a laptop i'll have of course the laptop up that in both cases there'll be a keyboard and a mouse somewhere even with the laptop i'll actually have a physical mouse there i'll have uh, my ipad all my cameras run in ndi mode so i need to have confidence screens being able to move the cameras, whether it be through the Stream Deck or if I bring a external joystick that allow me to turn the cameras, zoom the cameras in and everything like that, I can do that. So all that takes up desk space. So if I can take the Stream Deck out of it, then all of a sudden I have a virtual Stream Deck to do that. I have my mobile Stream Deck that can do it as well. And I can match all the buttons together 
so they work as one and be able to work from there. Now, I, sh I showed you that I was using vMix for some of the stuff. And with vMix inside the software, you have to identify the key uh, to the function, the shortcut. And so I'm not sure how that's going to work just yet with uh, a regular stream deck if i can match the keys then that's going to be great of course uh, vmix is an added application that you download through the store so let's bring in vmix here and we'll bring in the shortcut we'll bring that in as the third button if i go back to here copy this button and we'll bring it over to the virtual device i went to my stream deck too this button right here should be the button. When I press it, it'll it should go to here. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to copy this button. Then I'm going to go to virtual. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to go paste. So if I press this button, you should see it move over. And unfortunately, it doesn't do that. But it, it creates its own button. So if I go into settings, and let's see, I'll go to shortcuts. And we'll add one and then we'll do key control now i'll bring this over so you can see it says press a button to, uh, for the keyboard control so we'll press this and of course we've got a stream deck button we'll say okay we'll do a fly we'll fly in this camera right here then i'm going to say hey thumbnail let's see if that works all right inside here we have this key control where we can say stream deck button up uh, we choose fly and then of course I chose a camera. So it's gonna fly in another camera. We'll mix that. I also set it up so it I can see the thumbnail. And that's what this is right here. When I hit this button, it will fly in another camera. Just like that. It's this camera right here. And I'm not sure why it's acting so blue because the camera's not set up that way. But we can now go ahead and go back into this, uh, into this camera and uh, and go from there what's interesting is i guess i set up a second virtual stream deck and look at this there's a second set of buttons there's for that one so how many virtual stream decks can we do let's do another one there we go look at that there's three four now imagine all of these being 80 buttons we'll go to this one and we'll say eight by eight Look at that. Holy Moses, we have a ton of buttons. Now we'll go over to the Stream Deck 3, and we're going to go and we'll say 3 by 5 That's a standard 15-button Stream Deck. Look at that. And then this one right here, Stream Deck 2, let's make that into a standard 8 by 4 4 by 1, 6, 7, 8. And then we're going to change the frame color. We'll do a dark purple. Look at that. So this stream deck, dark purple. This stream deck, we'll change that color, violet. And then this big beast right here, let's do that one right there. Look at that. So we've got multiple options for stream decks and buttons. And of course, once we start putting stuff in here, let, let's do, let's put a shortcut in that will reduce down, but we still have 80 buttons and we'll be able to move that wherever we need to. So you could also create another virtual stream deck. And then this stream deck is basically one by one. Hey, look, I made a stream deck Tetris. And now that's going to be a single button. You'll never put in a shortcut from there and you can move these all around. So you'll have you have tons of stuff of stream deck shortcuts that you can utilize for whatever you need to do whether it is putting your computer to sleep whether it is to open a program whether it is to switch camera angles whether it is to have cool little fly-ins happen uh, to cameras that for some reason are in a blue color or whatever you need 
boom, you've got that. Now, uh, some small caveats here, some small things that you need to uh, be concerned about. The one thing is the more Stream Deck set, virtual buttons you set up, the more resource you start to take on your computer. So if you've got a low powered laptop that you're running things on, the more buttons you have, it's actually going to affect you even more than me on this machine, because this is a pretty beefy machine. Let's say I'm a, a Twitch streamer, for example. Twitch, Twitch. And I'm playing a game all on the same computer, playing a game, open up my Stream Deck. I have Stream Deck with Companion also. So you got Companion or Central Control running, which are third party programs that work with Stream Deck. That's switching. Maybe the camera is going to Twitch and then you're streaming out to Twitch all on that same computer the resources become very limited really quick. And then you start adding more and more buttons to your Stream Deck, that's gonna change that game as well. So that's something that you have to think about when you're doing this. But in all, having a simple six button system that you can move around from here, oh, that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna be great. So if I'm running around, let's say I'm showing different web pages. I can load up the web page and instead of loading them up onto the browser, I can just have buttons. So when I need to call up Geekazine, I just click that button and geekazine.com pops up. Simple as that. The real question is, how are you going to use your virtual Stream Deck buttons? Let me know in the comments below over at geekazine.com, youtube.com forward slash geekazine, where you can like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know when the next video comes out. Until next time, my name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys geek out and go virtual with Stream Deck and Elgato.